And Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Abram was 86 years old. Now we know, looking in the scripture, that he was 100 years old when he had Isaac. But you see, getting ahead of God messed up what God wanted to do. But it was God in God's plan for all of this to happen. Why do you think Hagar went to work with Sarah? Why do you think that she was a handmaid? Why do you think that all of this happened? A lot of people don't understand it, but God's got a plan. Hagar was part of God's plan. Fourteen years later, Isaac was born. The angel of the Lord came down to visit Hagar. I want to talk a little bit more about Ishmael and Isaac. These two have been fighting ever since they were little children. And they're going to fight throughout all days. But in verse 11, 16 and 11, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear his son, thou sh and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, the Arabs. He will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Ishmael and Isaac, the Arabs and the Jews. The Arabs are a nation, abundant nation. The Arabs cover the entire Middle East. They're everywhere. They're even here in America. They, you know, Ishmael, his seed. God kept his word with Ishmael, but he also kept it with Isaac. He said, this is going to be the seed of promise. And I, I want to try to get to where I'm going because I need to really spend some time there once I get there. But it says uh, over in verse chapter 21, and Abram in verse 5, 21, 5 of Genesis, and Abram was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. So he was 86 when Ishmael was born. He was 100 when Isaac was born. That's 14 years. Ishmael was 14 years old when Isaac was born. Now, a lot of people think that these are little bitty tiny kids when they're arguing and fussing. They're not. They're grown. They're, they're I ain't going to say adults, but they're young adults. In verse 9, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, Right there, it tells you that she's an Egyptian. She's not Hebrew, which she had born unto Abraham mocking. And that this is very important. Now, church, catch what I'm fixing to say. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out. Now, cast out. I want you to remember that. Cast out this bondwoman and her son. And the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Now, if you go over in the new covenant, this made Abraham, Abram, very sad because it was his son. And his wife said, cast him out. And God said, Abraham, or Abram, you would pay attention to what she said. And God said unto Abraham, let not it be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, in verse 12, and because of the bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, church, you may not understand this yet, but I want you to understand what I'm going to talk to you about. We're going to go into the new covenant, and we're going to bring up this same subject. That cast out is very, very important. I talked to you a little bit about it earlier today. There's an old covenant and a new covenant. One is by nature. The old covenant is by nature. A man and a woman got in bed together, and they slept together, and nature brought forth a child. That child was born of natural resources. Natural aid. You understand what I'm saying? That's the old covenant. It's by nature. Then the new covenant was by promise. 
Abraham, a hundred years old, Sarah was not able to have children, but a promise was made by God. You will have a child. That is my promise. So the new covenant is by promise. The old covenant is by nature. Now, I want you to understand this. The new covenant is by promise. You will have a son. You're going to call his name Isaac. That was a a promise that was kept by God. Sarah had a son. She conceived. And Abraham was was 100 years old when she conceived. So Isaac was born of promise, the new covenant. And And the old covenant... Sarah said it with her lips. Ishmael shall not bear part or shall not be heir to the throne or heir to any of the promises of my son. The old covenant people, the old covenant cannot be heir to the new covenant because we are saved by grace, by promise. We are part of the new covenant. Let's go over to the book of... Uh, I think it's in uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, that one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Can you understand that? One was by promise. Today, every child of God in here, every one of you Christians in here and joining by television, joining by radio, you're free today because of the promise of Christ. Christ promised you that if you would repent and invite Jesus into your heart, that you would be saved and that you would share in the eternal life that he has for you. It's all by promise. You accepted it. I accepted it. So we're saved by promise today. We're under the new covenant. Now, the old covenant, Christ said himself, I did not come to do away with it. I did not come to destroy the old law. I did not come to do away with it, but I came to fulfill it. He didn't come to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. Now, Christ is trying to tell everybody in here today that is, you're here by the promise of Christ. You're here by the promise. You're, brought, you're adopted into the family by promise because Christ told you that if you would repent of your sins, accept him as your Lord and Savior, God made you a promise that you'd become a child of the king. And he said, I'll see you until the day of redemption. And in Revelation 3, 5, he said to the overcomer, I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will not. You say, yeah, but that's the overcomer. Well, read 1 John 5, 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you become an overcomer. And when you become an overcomer, Christ says, I will not blot your name out of the book of life. There's so much in the Bible that we have to understand that we are the children of Isaac. We are born under the seed of Isaac. We have the promises of the seed of Isaac. You have a promise today. Christ tells us in the in the Gospels that there's others that are part of his flock or there's others that are part of his body that are not of the flock of the Jews. And he said, I got to go give them, which is the Gentiles. We are the Gentile nation today. But... It says right here, verse 24 of Galatians chapter 4, which things are an allegory of these are the two covenants, the one which, the one from Mount Sinai, which generous to bondage, which is Agar, Mount Sinai, the old covenant. For this Agar is Mount Sinai of Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that...